that we don't want C2 to creep any further in. Staff, your comments. Petitioner is requesting a conditional use permit for a mobile home. The property is surrounded by a mix of mobile homes and single family residences. The proposed mobile home meets the parish setback requirements. The staff recommends approval of this proposal subject to all applicable regulations. You are the petitioner? I am the petitioner and owner, okay. Doug Wall Nelson D. Anything to add to what they said? Yes. Um, I am a partner with Albright Homes. This home was placed on the property without a permit, which is my fault. I was in Costa Rica on vacation, and our transporting company thought I had pulled a permit. Um, and there was rain coming, so they delivered the home. Uh, that is my fault. It should not have been delivered. Uh, but it is a very nice home. This is a double wide with vinyl uh, siding and a shingle roof. I have some pictures if any of the board members would like to look at the pictures. I also have an appraisal on this property and home which is $90,000. I think that is going to be up and above the average price of homes in this subdivision. There's a mobile home across it on both sides. Uh, I've talked to residents in the area who are not opposed to it. I've talked to people who live in brick homes in there that are not opposed to it. They say this is a very nice looking home. Uh, they do not oppose it. Now I know there's a, a ruling for that subdivision that no homes are supposed to be put in their own wheels any longer, referring to trailers. I don't refer to this home as a trailer. Um, it is a manufactured home built as well as a lot of site built homes. Um, material is brought in for all these homes in their own wheels. This one just happened to be built at another location. If it was built on site there, if I took the same material in that home and took it all out there in individual pieces, that home would be approved for that subdivision. There's a Jim <coughs> Walter home being built within 100 yards. Uh, I see no difference in this home than that Jim Walter home that's within 100 yards. Um, there's other things that can be done that may help satisfy some of the neighbors. Let's set some guidelines on it. If we can do this and understand that they don't want trailer trash next door to use that term. And I understand that. So let's set some guidelines and perhaps say, okay, nothing but double wides. They have to be vinyl siding, shingle roof, uh, X number of square feet. There's another thing that can be done to really enhance the appearance of these homes. Instead of doing the vinyl skirting, which has a tendency to blow off, uh, it also has a tendency to discolor and so forth, which uh, it creates an eyesore. I would take it a step further and go out and put a brick skirting around the bottom. Maybe do a front deck with uh, brick steps. Uh, I think it takes nothing from the community. I think it would add to it. And I think the appraised value of it supports that. Thank you. Okay. You said you had some photographs. Can you pass yes. those photographs? Certainly. Opposition. Would I'll you like to see the appraised value on it also? No. Okay. I have a Mr. Don. Right. Uh, good evening, council members. My name is Don Swissom. I live at 110 Bayou Parquet. Uh, I'm here representing some of my neighbors who are unable to make it. Uh, but I have petitioned, set, got a petition up together last night with several signatures of people that live on that R Street and the surrounding area who will vehemently oppose a mobile home going in there simply because, and I agree with him, it looks great now. But what's it going to look like in 10 years? And and the zoning says no trailers. I purchased my home six years ago with the pretense that no more mobile homes were coming in there. Um, it is constantly being breached. It's either strictly enforced or overlooked. And, and this one is, 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 is critical to me because it, it is at the entrance to Bayou Parquet Estates. It's sitting on the northwest corner of Park and Bayou Parquet. It is the first house on the right as you turn on the Bayou Parquet. And again, uh, he had made a statement that he, was, uh, he wasn't aware they were going to move it in then. It was moved in on a Sunday. Saturday or Friday before, they dug footers for this trailer. 
which I, you know, at first I thought, well, maybe they're putting footers for a raised house. And the next thing we knew, there was a mobile home there. And uh, when I called code enforcement, I cannot remember the gentleman's name that I talked to, but he said he was, he was fooled into thinking this was like a modular home or a Jim Walters home or something else, but it is a mobile home. Um, and he quickly went out and put a sticker on, on the house, and I guess uh, this gentleman came, had to reply within 10 days, and which brings us to this point. Um, it's affected my property to the fact that I've recently had an appraisal on mine, and it would not appraise for more than $190,000 with three and a half acres. If it was located as little as a mile and a half away, or if the trailers that are dilapidated would go away and, and the neighborhood would continue to develop with the larger homes and, and some of the nicer houses and the brick structures that are going to stand. For instance, mine's 25 years old and is, it looks brand new. Uh, my yard is landscaped, maintained. And, but we still do have, as he said, some trailer trash or some people who don't take care of that. But they're not going to last very much longer. And, uh, you know, I don't know what his intentions are. I've lived in mobile homes myself. I, uh, you know, I've, I've since outgrown them and moved up from them. And I assume that he probably will too someday, which will mean that they, they, there's a possibility of a renter moving in. And then we've got a whole other situation. Um, a lot of my neighbors who signed this, uh, they're very confused about this conditional use thing too. And he hasn't even addressed that. He's, he's not saying he wants a conditional use to build a home. However, that, that is allowed in our neighborhood. But he's, he's placed this mobile home dead center of a corner property and not off to the side where he's going to build. So I don't think that's even an issue. Um, so if you'd like, I, I'll give you the signatures that I have. Uh, and these were just gathered last night. Uh, very quickly, the... The cases, the case sign was kind of hidden behind some weeds, so a lot of neighbors weren't aware of what was going on, and um, especially when I talked to them last night. So um, I strongly oppose this, and if the the council wishes to table it and and for me to give me time to get more signatures, I'd be glad to do that. He did go to some of the neighbors and talk to them. As a matter of fact, he approached my, my neighbor directly beside me, and he asked for permission to put a home in there. He didn't say mobile home. He didn't say brick home. He didn't say, he just said home. And uh, I don't know if he even has signatures from him. I have no idea. But uh, I have another opposition. So if um, Mr. or Ms. Donna Frank, you would just speak. And we'll see what she has to say. Okay. So and go into your butt time. Thank you for your time. This is an opposition also. Hi, I'm Ms. Frank, and um, I live on Ned Avenue, which is a few streets past where they're looking to um, to keep this. I came in about six months ago on this same lot to speak on behalf of um, not having a mobile home, and you denied that. And the next thing I knew, one was going in. Um, I know some of the people that he may have talked to who own a brick home who rent several trailers that they own out to other people. And that's what we're looking for in this neighborhood, for our property values to go up, for, you know, to get rid of these dilapidated trailers. We have several that are no one lives in or they're renting, they're put up for sale. Um, and again, this was opposed on this same property six months ago, and my neighbors on Ned had a petition here about um, nine months ago. We had a petition with probably 50 signatures that we are all opposed. Okay? And it's very difficult in our neighborhood to talk to other people because they have fences in front of their house and dogs, and it's, it's difficult to get signatures and for the people to know what's going on. So I'm opposed as, you know, as well. Thank you. Did he do his rebuttal? Do you have a, a, um, anything else you want to say, petitioner? To rebuttal this? Hmm. It's unfortunately that they feel like a $90,000 home does not fit into their neighborhood. 
it very well does. The average home in there will not appraise for $90,000. Um, and I happen to live in a quarter million dollar home. That's not to blow my own whistle. My next door neighbor lives in a manufactured home, very neat, nice yard. It has not hurt my appraised value at all. I've lived in manufactured homes. This is for a customer of Albright Homes who has two children and a wife uh, that need a home to, stay, uh, to live in. Um, uh, it is, like I say, it is a nice home. You've seen the pictures. This is not an exclusive neighborhood with $150,000, $200,000 homes in it. They're building Jim Walter homes in this neighborhood. This home fits in this neighborhood. Uh, if a Jim Walter home can be put there, then there's no reason a $90,000 home cannot be put there. Thank you for your that time. That appraised value, 90000 was that for the property too or just for the home? Say again. It is 90, for the property and the home. Property and home, yes. right? The property was 20000 It is approximately a full acre. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to close the floor. Ms. Arson. Mr. Wall, Mr. Wall, is, is it my understanding you, you do not intend to live in this home? No. I am a partner with Albright and, Homes. And, and you're in the business of building these homes? Correct. And you, are you aware that this is a A2 surrounded by A2 zoning? It was some confusion on that part because... But are you aware that that's the way it is zoned, yes. sir? All right. Um, if I, I am now. Thank yes. you. Um, I see absolutely no compelling reason to do this, and I move denial. Okay, I have second. a motion to deny. Do I have a second? All in favor, raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five. All opposed? One. Five to one. Motion to deny is granted. I don't have my sheet. Ms. Wall, you know you can appeal this, don't you? Okay. Is there a process in which this is taken out? Because it, normally once they're put in, they just don't seem to leave. They, they stay. And, uh, we'll have to check with, the, uh, with staff and Yes. It, yes. Since it's been denied, it, it would have to be removed unless if he appeals it to the council. Then we'll have to wait for the decision of the council. Okay. Is there any way that I could be notified if that is appealed? You will have to call us within the next 10 days at the planning department. Okay. 898. Oh, I have all those numbers. Okay. Thank you. Um, what is your name, sir? My name is Don Swisshelm. You filled out a card? Yes, ma'am. You will be notified if there is an appeal filed. Thank you. A certified letter will be mailed to the address on the card. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, that brings us to CP0206045, Jeffrey M. Landry is the petitioner. The owner is Jeffrey M. Landry. The